Happy Easter, friends. I hope that you're keeping well. Um, as we begin our service, let's just bow our heads and pray together. Glory and praise to you, risen Saviour. For you bring light to our darkness, joy to our sorrow, and the fullness of love to our hearts. Prepare our hearts and our mind, and speak to us through your word. In your precious name, Lord Jesus. Amen. If you've got your Bibles, please uh, open it with me. We're looking at Luke chapter 24, and we're going to look at the first 12 verses. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the woman took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the woman bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to him, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, on the third day be risen again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the leaven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them, who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the woman, because their words seemed to be like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. Friends, we find several women arriving at Jesus' graveside early Sunday morning. They came to finish what was started when Jesus' body was first laid in this tomb. But because Jesus died on Passover and because the Jewish Sabbath directly followed, they weren't able to complete the burial preparation required by Jewish tradition. So they had to wait for more than a day before they could return. Most people were still in bed when the woman arrived at the tomb. And there would have been nothing to indicate that these women expected anything more than to finish their preparation of Jesus' body. And that's probably because the resurrection was the last thing on their minds. And so they arrived at the tomb. And they're surprised to see the stone that covered the tomb had been rolled away. These stones were large, very large, and it could have taken several strong guys to, to muscle the stone away. Yet there it was rolled to the side. The woman tentatively ventured inside the tomb, only to find it empty. While they were trying to figure out what happened, suddenly two bright shining angels appeared. The woman was so overwhelmed, they fall with their faces to the ground. These two angels then delivered the very first Easter Sunday sermon. They started by asking the woman a very puzzling question. One specifically designed to make them start thinking. Why do you seek the living among the dead? This question must have puzzled them. Because the Roman government were expert in killing people. According to the historians, the Roman crucified around 30,000 Jews by this time. And guess what? None of them had survived. But what was all this talk about the living? The angels then give these women the main theme of the message. He, talking about Jesus, is not here. He is risen. Luke 24 verse 6 says, He is not here, but is risen. The Jewish people believed that the resurrection will occur at the end of the age. But no one considered the possibility that a person might be raised from the grave into immortal life before then. 
Now, while these women were still trying to comprehend the pro and process this new information, the angels moved to the application part of the message. Remember, in Luke 24, verse 6 uh, and 7, we can read into it. Remember how he spoke to you when he, he was still in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day rise again. They told the woman to remember what Jesus said before he died. And they remembered how Jesus said he would be delivered over to the Gentiles, executed, and how he would rise on the third day. It didn't make sense then, but it certainly did now. It says they returned to find the disciples hiding behind closed doors, their bags already packed. They wanted to sneak out of the city. and They were afraid the next arrest, the execution, might be theirs. They were filled with despair. And they were trying to make sense of the tragedy of Jesus' death. As the woman rushed in, they started talking about the angels rising from the dead. And it made no sense to these grief-numbered minds of the disciples. Luke tells us that it just seemed like a whole lot of nonsense to those who heard it. What we need to know is that in the ancient world, women were considered to be unreliable witnesses and they couldn't testify in court. So I think it's quite interesting that these women were the first witnesses to the resurrection. Certainly, this is not the kind of story the early church would invent to bolster the credibility of the resurrection. In fact, this is the one of those aspects that reveal its truthfulness because no one trying to make up a story by these witnesses that the world considered to be unreliable. Even though they didn't believe the woman right away, Luke records that Peter decided to investigate. And we're told in John's Gospels that John went with them. So they ran to the tomb and saw for themselves that the buried plot was still intact. And they wonder what happened as they walked away. What this reveals is the resurrection of Jesus is exactly the last thing the early followers of Jesus were expecting. Like all of us now, in this midst of this pandemic, the followers of Jesus were numb with grief and shock. Like all of us who are struggling to understand what is going on, this confusion in people's minds. Their minds were numb. The kind of numb feeling when we get something awful happens that we are unable to comprehend or process. I think this story of the aftermath of Jesus' crucifixion reveals some of the, or some of the things we do in the face of tragedy. After all, these men and women were just like us. So, question for us to think about is what does it mean for me today? Jesus is dying for my sins, his resurrection, this hope of Easter. What does it mean for me today? I want to tell us, Jesus is with us, each one of us, every day. And he is with us in every human struggle. He is with us in every human struggle. With this new pandemic that is sweeping across the globe, all our lives have been drastically changed. And the changes that have taken place were probably the beginning of, change, of the changes that will need to take place in the future. And while we will eventually get back to our daily routines, we'll probably spend years trying to figure out what happened as we try to make sense of this madness, of this complexity, of fighting a war on something we cannot see. I would like to remind us, Jesus is with us in every struggle, my friends. At the cross, Jesus was isolated, separated from his friends, staring at death. 
And so, when tragedy hits, we tend to forget the words of Jesus. We struggle to see God's plan in the midst of it, and we tend to distrust others when they tell us about how faith in Jesus Christ will help and bring hope. Now this is not the end of the story. Romans chapter 8 verses 10 and 11 says, But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. Now if this is the end of the story, the Christian faith would have died off quickly. But it isn't. Jesus showed himself alive to others. The rest of the chapter of Luke 24 you can read in your own time. How in fact the rest of the New Testament claims that Jesus appeared to over 500 different people over a period of 40 days after his resurrection. And when each of these people encountered Christ personally, all doubts were dispelled. It's one thing to look at the historical death data and infer that the most likely explanation is that Jesus rose from the grave. But it's quite another thing to see Jesus standing in front of you, inviting you to touch his hands and side and asking to share a meal with you. In other words, we need to personally encounter the risen Jesus. The church did not create the resurrection of Jesus, but the resurrection of Jesus created the church, my friends. The Bible calls the church the body of Christ and tells us that Jesus is the head of the church. So the church is the place where Jesus makes himself known and reveals his resurrection life. The mission of the church is not only to tell the people of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but we have to take them on that journey to finding peace, truth and joy too. The mission of the church is also to personally introduce people to the risen Saviour, Jesus Christ. If Christ has truly risen from the grave, then he can be known today. Jesus isn't just a subject to be studied, but he is someone that everyone can know personally. You see, there's a big difference bet between knowing Christ rose from the grave and having a relationship with the risen Christ. In these uncertain times that we are facing, let's hang on to the hope that we have in Christ. The Christian faith is about knowing Jesus personally. And that is why we are gathered as a community of believers which is known as the church. Whether it is in a building, in homes or via the internet, if we want to encounter Christ in the midst of all this that is going on, then we are right where we need to be. Today we need personally to meet with Jesus and then we can turn our tragedy into triumph. Jesus was not resurrected to turn bad people into good people. He was resurrected to bring dead people to life. For those of us who believe and follow Jesus today, it is a great celebration. For those of you who do not know Jesus, today is a great invitation for you to get to know him. Let's bow our heads and pray. And now may the God of peace who brought back again from the dead our Lord Jesus equip you with all you need for doing his will. May he produce in you th through the power of Jesus Christ all that is pleasing to him. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Thanks for tuning in guys. Happy Easter and may God bless you.